let me go to that, uh, uh, let's see, Clint, uh, yeah, you're unmuted, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Clint. Very good class, very interesting. Uh, you mentioned uh, one point, and it's real easy to prove, I'm going to take just a couple of minutes, minute. but in Luke chapter 1, verse 5, you see that Zacharias, of uh, course, was in the month, or the uh, course of Abiah. And if you go to 1 Chronicles chapter 24, verse 10, and verse 18, you see that's that's the eighth lot or the eighth course. And you can calculate all that out. And you can read there and you can see that when he came back home, Elizabeth was became pregnant with, with John the Baptist. And that happened to be toward the end of, of June. And, and, and John the Baptist is six months older than Jesus Christ. So that means that Jesus Christ would be conceived sometime toward the end of December and be born sometime the end of September or the 1st of October. So the Bible verses to prove that biblically is Luke chapter 1 verse 5 and 1 Chronicles chapter 24 verse 10 and verse 18. So the Bible is true and you're absolutely right. Horrible tradition has come in and men love tradition more than they love God's word. So thank you, Eric. Very thorough. Thank you. Thank you, Clint. Uh, yeah, I know uh, Richard Jordan goes into the details of that. Basically, you've got uh, when David set up the priest, he had 24 courses of the priest. So it's approximately two weeks uh, out of the year where each each uh, priest area there would have their would be the priest there in the temple. And so, according to when from Zechariah being of that particular priest course then you can determine, uh, like he mentioned, when uh, Elizabeth became pregnant based upon that, and then you know that she was pregnant six months before Mary, and so when you put all that together, then Mary was probably pregnant of uh, uh, well, the Holy Ghost around this time, December 25th. And by the way, and something Richard points out, it's a good point, is that that's the big miracle of the birth of Christ. Uh, the actual birth of Christ was just an ordinary birth. I mean, she's pregnant for nine months. Uh, he comes, Jesus is born, just like uh, anybody else of a, you know, anybody else would be born. The true miracle was that uh, that he didn't have an earthly father. So the Holy Ghost, the seed of God being placed into Mary's womb by the Holy Ghost, is the true miracle of Jesus' birth, and that probably took place around December 25th. So it's a yeah, and so that would make him born around September 25th. So that's, that's real interesting. Yeah, so thanks, thanks for bringing that up. Sylvia, I think you can go ahead and unmute yourself, Sylvia. You have something? Okay, I think this is off topic a bit. Do you mind? No, that's okay. Go ahead. Um, I was just wondering when the wise man came to, to, you know, to honor Jesus, and he was maybe around two years old, um, were they in Egypt at that time? They go after that, um, because in Matthew 2, they're still there in, um, at their home. And then it says, uh, so in Matthew 2, verse 12, the wise men, they, the, wise, the Herod said, well, go back. They told the wise men, well, when you find the child, come back to me and let me know so I can worship him also, which really meant he wanted to kill him. And so then they don't go back. And verse 12 there, they're warned of God in a dream to depart another way. Don't go back to Herod. And then verse 13, when they were departed, when the wise men were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. So it looks like what happens is that uh, Mary and Joseph and Jesus are all in uh, that Bethlehem area for up to two years. And then once the wise men find him, then the Lord says, okay, now go to Egypt. So it happens just after that. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sylvia. Um, brother, I, I know we don't have a normal crowd. This is Christmas night. You all got probably stuff that you're going to do. Um, if anybody has a question, uh, just go ahead and unmute yourself and uh, we'll, or comment. And any Bible-related question as well, we can cover that as well. Uh, but I'll just open it up for uh, you know whoever wants to 
ask something or, or provide a comment. Eric, Jerry Brown. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Jerry. I just want to say I appreciate you taking the time, putting that study together, and a lot of great information that people can review and look into and um, have some real good um, information there with history and where all that comes from. So we, we thank you for the uh, time investment there and sharing that with us. Thank you, Jerry. Did anybody else have anything? Go ahead, Lisa. Hey, hey Eric. Thank you so much. Um, the I wanted to let y'all know. Hey, Richard. Good to see you. You need to go to bed and get some rest. My gosh. Um, That's probably why he's standing. He might fall asleep if he sat down. <laughs> we were with Denise and Wayne and Angie Thursday night, and we watched that teaching from Richard about when Jesus was really born. So I found the link today and sent it to Oscar and Benoit. So if anybody wants that link, I can email it to you. I'll email it to you, Gail. It's on their church. It, it freezes up like about 30 minutes into it. It's only 40, I think, two minutes long. The, the, video, the freezes. video freezes, but you can hear him talk. Lisa, if, you, okay. if, if you'll email that to me as well, um, I'll, I'll send it to my list if anybody wants to watch that. Because, yeah. yeah, I've watched that before. Years ago, and it's it's very good, giving you about Jesus' uh, birthday. Yeah. Yes. Well, I'll be I'll email it to uh, you, Eric, and then then I'll email it to the whole list too. Okay. That's great. All right, y'all. All right. Uh, anybody else have anything before we close? Okay. Just well. A big thank you. Oh, thank you, Sylvia. Yeah, thanks everybody for joining us. I realize, you know, like I say, if you got family traditions and things you're getting to, I, you know, I completely understand that. I don't want to put a, a damper on anybody's uh, celebrations, but just uh, just knowing the truth behind this stuff is good. So thank you for joining us, and uh, I'll put this up on YouTube. Uh, I'll post my notes in the comments section too of the of the message, so you can you can go over that because I didn't I didn't go over everything. I've got uh, four pages of notes here. I didn't go over all that stuff. Fair I have, a, I have a verse that... Um, oh, yeah. Go ahead, Oscar. Yeah. This time of year, um, I'm always focusing on this particular verse more than other verses. It's Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. And uh, that verse uh, is a great verse this time of year. It says, but, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law. And, and so that's the birth of Jesus Christ to redeem them, them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of some. <laughs> so that kind of covers, it covers the, the two dispensations there. It covers the, the time of his birth and then it transfers over towards uh, we. Uh, also, the adoption of sons, and also Israel is going to be adopted as sons as well. So it's kind of like we're both adopted, uh, you know, into the uh, into the kingdom of, of heaven. Uh, so yeah, that time of year is always special to me because I can always, uh, of course, the verse tells me uh, when the time has come, and that was already prophesied before in the Old Testament. And so then God sent forth his son, and then we all know from that point forward. And one more thing that I know that we all know this, but a woman's womb is perfect. There, there's nothing, it's perfect. And when the man, the, when the conception happens from an earthly father, that's when sin is, continues to the next generation. Yes. So when the Holy Spirit, who has no sin, conceived with Mary, then that's why Jesus was sinning. Um, and that's what it refers to when God sent forth his son. So there's so much involved in that verse that, that I could probably do a little study on that um, also. But I thought I would just mention that verse. Because I don't see it, I don't hear it enough during this time of year. Obviously, um, under our dispensation of grace, you know, we, uh, we're looking to fall. 
but uh, we always uh, remember Jesus Christ that I mean I'm sorry his birth as a uh, as what God sent so that's what I had thank you Oscar yeah I appreciate you sharing that I know um, although we may know the background of all this uh, most people don't and they're not really involved in Baal worship it's an excellent opportunity. My mom has had it for years. She's got it in her window right now. It says, little thing, it says, Happy Birthday, Jesus. She puts it out there for Christmas. Uh, it's a good opportunity to put the focus on what the celebration is supposed to be. If it's supposed to be on Christ, let's talk about Christ. So maybe when you get together, when you have people who don't ordinarily go to church or they're not uh, Bible believers, maybe you have the opportunity with it being Christmas, to say, well, here's what it's all about. Here's the birth of Jesus. And you don't go through all the, the pagan stuff. You know, you talk about Galatians 4, 4 through 5, you know. This is what we should be celebrating. God sent forth his son. And the reason is to redeem us, that we might receive the adoption of sons. So you've got, although it's got pagan roots, you know, God, God can change things around. I remember uh, Joseph and his sons, uh, his brothers, sell him into slavery. And when he finds out Joseph is the ruler there, um, the sons, his, his brothers, are worried. Saying, oh no, you know, they're going to, um, you know, he's going to punish us. He's going to kill us or put us in prison or something. And Joseph says, well no, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. And so you can do that with Christmas. It may be a pagan invention that Satan has meant for evil, but God can turn it around. God's a master at taking something evil and turning it oh, yeah. around for good. That's what he's done for all of us. We're evil, wicked, bound for hell. Yeah. I was going to say that same thing. That's what he does with me. He took something that was meant for evil and made it good. That's right. Yeah. So here's a, here's a pagan ceremony, and you could say, hey, you know, we're celebrating the birth of Christ. Let me tell you why Christ was born. Galatians 4, 4 through 5, and in two verses, you could clearly share the gospel. Jesus came, was born, lived a perfect life, and then he died for our sins. And so when you trust that Jesus died for your sins, you can have eternal life with him forever. It's, uh, you, know, you may not have that opportunity to share with unbelieving family members or friends, except at a time like this. So, uh, yeah, what, what Satan meant for evil, God can turn around and be for good. So, uh, so I appreciate you mentioning that, Oscar. You're welcome, brother. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Um, anybody else before we close? All right, again, I want to, oh, Gail, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say I really enjoyed this. Um, you know, it just goes to show you that there are so many things that are, I mean, it's hard for me to explain this. <laughs> Basically, I'm finding out over the course of a several year period that pretty much everything we believed in is a lie. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, it's not like Santa just popped up and said, I'm a lie. It's like everything's a lie. <laughs> so, and, and you could really get discouraged by it if you don't uh, go back to the fact that, thank God we don't. We, we know that now. We've discovered that, and we're not tied to the course of this world, and it, it's just like a weight's lifted off of your shoulders when that happens, because you know that um, you, you pretty much, I mean, I pretty much expect it anymore that anything that I see on TV or anything, it, you know, I always say, well, what's the, what's behind that? What's the motive for this? Because I know it's not true. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so it, it's, it's nice to know, but it's also nice that we know that it's not, it's not going to affect the outcome for us. Yes. We know, we know that we're saved. So um, that's the blessing. Yeah, we can see this as the God of this world and operating by His course, but we can operate by living by the faith of the Son of God and Christ living in us. So this stuff, uh, you know, we don't we keep, we don't have to let it affect us. You know, no. So, yeah, th thanks. We just had a discussion with somebody today about that, so it's it's a blessing, really. Yep. Praise the Lord. Th thanks, Gail. Thank you. All Thank right. Thank you for. All this work. Oh yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Like I say, I'll put it under the under the comment under the 
YouTube description. Probably what I'll do is uh, when I get that link from Lisa, I'll, I'll probably just uh, include my notes and the link from Lisa and then also the link for this study. Put it all into one. So, uh, All right, um, so thanks everybody. I've still planned the normal studies, so tomorrow night we'll do our uh, basic uh, Christian basics and Tuesday night at 7. Um, I don't even remember what we're covering. <laughs> <laughs> I've been studying so many different things. Um, mental, mental issues, the mental issues. Yes, the mental issues. Yeah, I've got some verses I'm going to put in. Yeah, I was having a mental issue right there and I'm figuring it out. <laughs> yeah, I'll put up some verses here uh, how to deal with mental issues. So uh, okay. everybody enjoy the rest of your night and uh, hopefully see you tomorrow. Right. Good night, everybody. Bye, Eric. Good night, y'all. Good night, thank Bye. you. Good night, everybody.